Hey folks, Moose here. So this video is uh, part of the um, March Madness uh, viewer's choice. Um, so this is going to be the Kenwood stereo receiver. This is uh, quite heavy. Um, you know, sneaking a peek through the, the grating on the top, looks like there's a pretty massive transformer in there and uh, some big chunks of aluminum. Um, but these stereo receivers are typically not um, they're not usually gold mines. So uh, that being said, let's let's take a look, see what's inside. All right. So for starters, we've got to get all these screws off. Pull out my little screw bucket. So on the back here, I know it's going to be really hard to see, but around all of these things, you're going to have a lot of little screws in there. While you're taking the screws off the back to get the case off, it's a good idea to uh, take those off while you're there, because you're going to have to take them off anyway, and hopefully you don't strip them. Ta-da! Yay, I got all the screws. All right. So this panel, as you can see by my magnet, steel. Now, um, <laughs> something to keep in mind, um, in my travels um, selling stuff on eBay and, and uh, helping one of my coworkers uh, who has a tuner collection, I've learned that parts of these things, especially if they're like old and rare, uh, can be worth you know a decent amount of money. So before you throw anything like this away, especially where you know, all the ink is still, all the lettering is still like intact, um, look up the make and model on eBay and see if any was anyone's selling it, or if any have sold recently, because uh, you might be surprised. I mean, this might be worth ten bucks or, or more. So, just a little side note there. All right, let's take a look at this dust bunny heaven. All right. Ooh, that, yeah, that, ooh, yep. Tasty. Okay, so we've got wire. We've got a little board here. Uh, let's see. So I'm not seeing any gold plating in any of the connectors, which is fine. Uh, there is an IC chip right in the middle of that thing, so you want to keep that. Um, there are some little disc capacitors, those little orange things right there. Uh, those may contain silver. Of course, there's that little switch there, which may contain silver as well. So we'll switch back and forth. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm seeing on there through the, the dust and fuzz. But if anyone else sees anything on there that they, uh, they know has precious metals in them, make sure you leave it in the comments. Now, at first glance, I'm looking through this thing, and I can tell you that there is going to be, you know, a nice little bit of copper in here. All the boards that I'm seeing in here so far, all low grade. Yep. I mean, even this big one over here, I mean, it's brown, so, you know, right away, it kind of... Brown boards usually are rarely ever mid or high grade. It's possible, but it's not likely. All right, so another chunk of steel. All right, and we're done. So I'm going to use my little flush cutters here. Lots of ribbon wire. And looking at that wire, this is going to be like 
that low grade wire. Um, it doesn't even look like it's copper in there. Uh, nope, looks like aluminum wire, so get rid of that. All right, so on this board, let's see if I can get something to point with. That'll work. All right, so we have, of course, some IC chips. We've got more of these little disc capacitors, which again could contain silver, I'm not 100% sure. We've got these little guys that have three legs on them. Um, I think that they can have precious metals in them. I'm not quite sure. Um, we've got you know, these little guys. Um, I'm not really... I don't think that these really have much of anything in them. Uh, I'm sure they, they do have some in some of them. But from my understanding, uh, but what I've learned uh, is that the amount is so little, it's not profitable to, to try and recover. So, but again, if you see anything in there that you know that I didn't point out, leave it in the comments. So on the other side of the board, we've got, uh, again, we've got the three, three IC tips. We've got a little crystal oscillator here. We've got more of these little disc capacitors. We've got one of these things. This is a um, a SIP, a single single inline package, or something like that. These would be called dips. The, these IC chips because they have two sets of feet. This one just has one, so this one may still contain gold bonding wires in it. And I do believe that's it. So not, not a whole lot, and again you've got these little three-legged guys here uh, that are hard to really see, but those may have, oftentimes you find them with uh, the legs plated gold, uh, so you want to make sure you take those off, put them aside. You know a lot of this stuff, I mean like, because I, I get so little for these boards, and because I'm learning so much, and I forgot to point out these right here, so those guys, uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think those might be tantalum as well. But again, you know, there's still a lot that I don't because it has the uh, the plus sign on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, point being is that with a lot of this stuff, the way that I remove everything is is with the air chisel, and. It doesn't hurt to you know pull out what you what you know what you're familiar with, but just throw everything else in a five gallon bucket because you never know. I mean, two months down the road, you might be like, oh hey, I just realized that these things. I mean, these don't. These are just aluminum capacitors, um, but these things might have you know palladium in them, and that way you're not kicking yourself for throwing it out. I mean, especially with these low grade boards. I mean, my scrapyard gives me light iron price, so. It's I can depopulate the heck out of it and not really worry about getting less money. All right. Wire, wire everywhere. And I know one of the things that I get asked a lot is about. Um, Discharging old electronics. Uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, sure, that, that's a good practice. But in all honesty, since I've been doing this uh, since 2012, uh, I have not once had anything that still had a charge in it. It's not to say that it couldn't happen, and it's not to say that you sh shouldn't discharge things if you know how. Uh, but you know, something like this, I feel kind of comfortable because you know, the power cord is cut off and I mean the copper on the end of it had already started to like corrode a little bit so it's been off for a while so I'm pretty sure that it hasn't been plugged in recently. Okay. There's the big dial from the front. go on screw removal duty here again.
trash. Oh, no, there's a screw. How the heck did they get that in there? Hmm, Lordy. All right, well, it looks like I need to take the faceplate off. Somehow. Ah, more screws. Okay, so on the bottom side, looks like there's a bunch more. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve more screws just on the bottom. Oh, yep, that one. Loosen some stuff up. Nope. There it is. Yep. Alrighty. face which again you know like I mentioned about the, the backing you know if it's in decent condition check it out on eBay this thing is not magnetic so I would say that is aluminum that's gonna get melted and hey look at that more screws all right, so looking at this, the first thing that you're gonna notice is there are dozens of these little tactile switches. These can have a little bit of silver in them, all right? So make sure you, um, you know, if you're into silver recovery, pull those off, set them aside, you know, sell them, do whatever you wanna do with them. The next thing that I'm noticing is of course this IC chip here, um, and these little LEDs, all right? So these are the, the old style LEDs, light emitting diodes. Now. The nice thing about these, this is something that, again, I just learned this week, thanks to the uh, e-waste and precious metal uh, recovery group on Facebook. Um, I had not known this before, but, so I, I know that the new LEDs, the little like flush mount ones that are kind of tiny and flat, those have gold in them, but so do these. If I won't be able to show you on the camera, but if you look straight in there, there's one gold bonding wire that goes between the um, those two connectors in there. So each one of these has a gold bonding wire. And it's my understanding that these can be, uh, the gold can be recovered fairly simply. Um, I've heard stories of people just, uh, there, there's one guy in the group that said he just like heated them up to like 500 some odd degrees, just enough to melt the plastic and all the metal kind of like sunk to the bottom and then he got it out that way. Um, most people say they just incinerate them with their IC chips and, you know, whatever works for you. But there is gold in those. <clears throat> now, we've also got another one of those disc capacitors over here. Those little orange discs, which again, I've heard have silver in them. Um, we've got, so these little guys here, that blue thing, there's a black one just like it right there. Another one of those blue ones over here. I'm not quite sure what those are. Uh, so if you do, and you want to put it in the comments section, if you know what's in them, go right ahead and mark it. Um, and as well with this display, I can see 
a bunch of different metals in there, but I'm not quite sure. And it's, it's got legs, kind of like a big IC chip. So if you know anything about that, make sure you put it in the comment section and uh, we'll be sure to, to research it. And maybe on a future video, we will let other folks know. But so as far as, as far as this goes, we've got the tactile switches, we've got the IC chip, the disc capacitors, the LEDs, um, another IC chip here on the back. This would be um, uh, a quad, so it's got legs on four sides. It's Sony made in Japan. I've had good luck with uh, Japanese chips, they seem to be higher quality. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And this thing, I have no idea what that is. But we're scrapping it, so let's take it apart and find out. Stubborn little board. Probably gonna destroy. Right, there we go. Now where to go? So this is the remote control sensor. Um, it's got a little black glob on the front, which uh, likely has some bonding wires underneath it. Hopefully they're gold. I can see yeah, a little bit of gold plating underneath the solder mask. So yeah, and there's also one tiny little. MLCC in the corner. As for this thing right here, which I assume is what picks up the remote signal, I'm not sure if there's anything in that. So again, counting on you viewers, if you guys have more experience than I do, let me know if there's anything in there. Okay, so this little board that went on the dial for the tuner, um, we've got again a lot of the same stuff. You know, we've got a couple of little IC chips. Now, not all, not all ICs contain gold, but they all get processed the same way, so why not just throw them in there anyway? You're not, um, you're not wasting money on chemicals or anything by incinerating these things. We've got more of those disc capacitors. We've got uh, those little aluminum capacitors and you know, a bunch of this other stuff, which I'm not quite sure what it is. Same with these little red guys here. So, you know, again, if anybody knows what those are, post them in the comments. We've got this dial. Now, a lot of these may contain silver contacts in there, um, or, you know, depending on the age, or, I mean, you want to test them because I've seen some things, especially since that rotary phone video that I did, um, and what I learned on that, um, some of them may test positive for palladium, so you want to make sure you check that out. But, they are a pain in the butt to get into. Like really, a major pain in the butt. Alright. Where did I miss it? Oh, there we go. Alright, so this thing looks like, I don't know, cast aluminum or some other non-ferrous alloy. Pop. There goes that. And that's no way to access it. So this thing would have to come off and be, you know, kind of crushed. But there may be contacts in there. At the very least, you're going to find, you know, tiny chunks of brass, most likely. Uh, maybe copper. Um, and that looks like an electric motor. So Yep, so that's an electric motor on there, so the remote, you can probably like change the radio station. So this made the dial move. Um, so then there's a little bit of copper in there. Alright. jeweler's loop here, not that it really matters, but, well, yep, yeah, it is, it's tin coated copper wire, it's still low grade, but I just wanted to know, alright, so, we're looking at this board here, and again, we've got a lot of the same, a little 
little shield, see what's underneath it. Nope. Nothing on that side, it was apparently for this thing. So we've got a couple more IC chips there. We've got more ICs out here. We've got a lot of these SIPs or single inline packages right here. Going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them. So make sure you pull those off. And we got more of those little disc capacitors, more of those little red looking capacitors. I'm not quite sure again what they are. Um, yeah, they've all got a number and then the letter J for some reason. So we got that. We've got these little boxes that um, they just have two tiny little spools of copper. So not really worth pulling off. Um, but I don't really see anything else in there worth the effort. And I think that's it for that. So again, low grade board. Another piece of steel. Okie dokie. Hopefully should come off fairly easy. Circuit board off. <laughs> so this transformer weighs eight pounds thirteen ounces. So just keep that in mind. thing is a really thick band of copper so I don't know about the rest of the transformer some of them are easy to take apart some not um, but I'm definitely going to be taking this band off oh, that will be a project for another time I suppose Maybe I can do another video on Scrapping transformers. I know I've got a couple of them that are that have been pretty popular. Maybe we can explore some new methods for getting that copper out. But here it is. Here's that big chunk of copper. Of course, it's got like a layer of glue or something on it. But it's the yellow copper. All right. Let's get rid of that. And next, all right. So this little board that was attached to it. So again, we've got the uh, you know the disc capacitors. They do have writing on them, so you can actually look them up to make sure that they are the ones that contain silver. Um, again, it's a very small amount. Uh, we've got this thing right here, which I believe is called a MOSFET. Now this has, so this is four legs, so there's a chance I could have four gold bonding wires. Um, so you want to make sure that you, know, you keep these and put them aside. This, you know, again, something that I just learned recently is to hold on to these things. Um, you can process them uh, like you do IC chips. And you have the added benefit of usually there being, you know, another chunk of copper in there. Uh, so you've got that value in them. And um, if you do like I do with my IC chips and uh, put them in like old AP to dissolve the legs, if there's silver or any other kind of precious metals coating the legs, you'll be able to, to capture it that way. All right, 
So let's try and work our way through this one. So we've got again these little three-legged guys, which I believe may contain precious metals, but I'm not 100% sure. We've got uh, in this one, we've got all these little spools of copper wire, which are ripe for the picking. So make sure you take those. We've got uh, some big capacitors, um, uh, transformer, some aluminum heatsink again here. Now, one thing that you want to make sure that you notice um, on all of these aluminum heat sinks, these things attached to them, these MOSFETs, I believe they're called, those have precious metals in them. Um, they can. So you want to make sure that you remove them. Now, you got to remove them anyway if you want to sell you know, the aluminum heat sink for you know, clean extruded price. So, save them up. Now we've got one big clean extruded aluminum heatsink that will fit very nice in my 10 kilogram crucible this spring, along with that faceplate. Turn it into a nice little ingot. Alright, so back to board here. So again, All of these things, you know, the, the number of legs that you see on them, that's the number of gold bonding wires they can potentially have. Um, this little piece of metal that you see on the back, that is copper. It's just plated. Um, and there's going to be, you know, copper inside them as well, probably. So again, keep those, make sure they get incinerated with your IC chips. Uh, you won't regret it. little chunks of copper like that just begging to be clipped off I'm happy to oblige all right so next up these little black boxes so it looks like I've got uh, one two three four five six of them on this board now this is something you pop off the top all right number one if the top pops off <laughs> this is the right kind it's a relay um, there are some that you try and pull off and the bottom looks like it's completely filled with epoxy or whatever but in these, let's see if I can get in a, a little bit tighter. All right, so right here, there is these little contacts. Um, so this one's got brass and copper. So you pull this thing up here and that right in the middle of that is a contact it's could be silver could be palladium uh, rarely are they ever like gold or gold plated um, but for the most part they're silver so yeah it's tiny but it's there so why not grab it and also you're gonna find that little spool of copper which these guys are pretty easy to get off uh, you just you know clip off that that black plastic ring, it usually just snaps right off, really easy, and then the copper just unwinds. Of course, that, I believe, is pretty much it. I don't see, oh, there's one little IC chip on there. Oh, there's another little, one of those MOSFET thingies. Another one attached there, two more attached to this. And no ICs on the other side. But there is a screw mystery screw. Looks like it's probably attaching that aluminum heat sink. So I will help that along. Alright, so that's it.
right, so that's it for the uh, receiver. Um, you know, a whole bunch of little things in there. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing huge. Um, you know, I'd say there's probably a good, you know, three or four pounds of copper throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, some big chunks of aluminum, which is nice. A lot of little gold bearing bits. Uh, nothing, nothing substantial that would really, I mean, you're not going to get rich off, off one of them, but it's all stuff that you should definitely, you know, put aside and stockpile until you have enough to process. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, there, there's several things that I asked you folks who are watching this, if you have any experience with, if you know about, uh, like these little, these little red guys here, if you know what those are, and like these little blue things here, if you know what those are, make sure you put, put that in the comments. And because I mean, I, again, just like you folks, I'm still learning as I go. I mean, there's you could sink a ship with the stuff that I don't know. So, but I'm happy to learn it with you. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell. And um, if you want to be entered into the 100,000 subscribers giveaway, make sure that you check out the video description. There is uh, some channels. All you have to do is subscribe to those channels and my DIY Daddy channel. And you're in. That's it. It's free to enter. And if I hit 100,000 subscribers by January, sorry, by December 31st, 2012. Uh, wow. <laughs> December 31st, 2020. Um, if I hit 100,000 subscribers by then, I'll be giving away a bunch of stuff to a bunch of different people. Uh, I, the, the longer. The longer I, things go by, the more things that I'm looking at, you know, giving out from ingots, gold, silver, um, copper ingots, you know, t-shirts, hats, you name it, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you keep watching, subscribe to those channels, and see you all later.